Among the myriad historic treasures in the archives of the Perth Amboy Free Public Library is a photograph of city, state, and even national historic importance. If you have ever seen a picture of Thomas Mundy Peterson in books or online, this will be the image you know. A confident looking man with touches of gray in his hair and beard, proudly wearing the gold medal awarded to him by the city of Perth Amboy in 1884 in recognition of his historic vote. As far as is presently known, this was the only time he had his picture taken. It is not clear when or how this photograph found its way into the library, as there appears to be no surviving acquisition records. A clue as to who owned it, however, can be found on the reverse. Beneath a pasted-on transcription of the medal is written in pencil, belonging to Mrs. R. L. Young. Thanks to some sleuthing by librarian Vilma Novak, I can say this is likely a reference to Ralph Leroy Young. Born April 9, 1871 in Woonsocket, Rhode Island, and a Spanish-American war veteran, Young was living in Perth Amboy by 1901, when a city directory recorded him living on Madison Avenue. By 1913, he was living on High Street, not far from where Peterson had lived, though by that time Peterson had died in 1904 and his house was no longer standing. How Young evidently came by the photo is not yet known, but it seems to have been his wife, Cornelia, who he married on August the 7th, 1918, who donated it to the library. Young died in 1937, but Cornelia appears as late as a 1945 city directory. Perth Amboy historian John Dyke informed me that the library's print was not the only one known. Since the process created a glass plate negative, multiple copies could be made of the same image. He found one in the collections of the National Museum of African American History and Culture, part of the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. On the back of this copy was the imprint of W.R. Tobias, Portraits, 194 High Street, Perth Amboy, New Jersey. William R. Tobias was born in 1850 in Pennsylvania, and by the 1880 U.S. Census was living with his wife, Jessie, in New York City, working as a negative retoucher. They evidently moved to Perth Amboy shortly thereafter, where he set up his photography business on High Street. He was also involved with James and Lewis Watson selling bicycles. New Jersey photography historian Gary Soretsky has several examples of Tobias's work in his collection. Tobias maintained his shop in Perth Amboy for some 35 years before his death on June the 13th, 1920. The photograph would have been taken by a large camera on a tripod in Tobias's studio. The photographer likely used a gelatin dry plate negative, a technology which had become available around 1880 and was much more convenient and much more sensitive than the earlier collodion wet plate negative process. Dry plates on glass came ready to use right out of the box and photographers called it the instantaneous process. After exposure, the plate was developed, fixed, and washed. It was then contact printed, very probably in the sun, onto albumin paper. Albumin, made from egg white, was coated on paper by the manufacturer but not yet sensitized to light. The photographer would have had to have sensitized the paper by floating it face down in a bath with a silver compound. The negative would have been placed onto this sensitized albumin sheet and exposed to bright sunlight for several hours. The print was then fixed, washed, and toned with a gold chloride solution, which gave it a distinct purplish-brown hue. After drying, it was ready for mounting onto the cardboard. While neither the Perth Amboy or Smithsonian prints are dated, the most logical idea is the photo was taken in 1884, shortly after Peterson was awarded the gold medal in recognition of his having been the first African American in the United States to vote under the 15th Amendment. The medal, which can be clearly seen on his jacket, was given to him on May 30, 1884, Decoration Day, the post-Civil War precursor to Memorial Day. Both the Perth Amboy and Smithsonian prints have the same printed label on the back that transcribe the words on the medal, suggesting these were made as some kind of souvenir. Other copies may be out there, but these are the only two that I am aware of at present. If we can presume that this photo does indeed date to 1884, we see an almost 60-year-old Thomas Peterson. His face seems to reflect what local historian Harold E. Pickersgill said of him in a 1923 newspaper column. 
there was a certain dignity about him, which indicated even to those who saw him for the first time that there was something out of the common about him. Compared to the Smithsonian print, the Perth Amboy copy is in rougher shape. The image is a bit faded, and the card backing is cracked and dog-eared. Gary Soretsky told me that the fading seemed consistent with sun damage. Perhaps the backing had been cut down so it would fit into a frame. If this was true, it would mean the photo had been displayed by the original owner. When I gave my 2017 Thomas Mundy Peterson Day presentation, the library had the photograph on display. I was alarmed, however, to see that it was bent along a crack that had developed across the card backing. I alerted the staff who removed it immediately. It's unclear how this damage occurred. However, because of this weakness, by 2018, the pieces had separated. While certainly distressing, all is not lost. I have volunteered to spearhead the effort to find a photograph restoration expert. I've been using the Directory of Conservators from the American Institute for Conservation of Historic and Artistic Works. This professional organization accredits conservators based on their adherence to established best practices. Bids are presently being collected and we hope to move forward soon. Hopefully, by this time next year, we will be able to unveil the newly repaired and conserved photograph, preserved for future generations who will also gather to remember how a handyman from Perth Amboy made civil rights history.